Dawn light filters through the blanket of smoke covering Mexico City, where nine million people live. Skyscrapers rise up in all directions, powering an economy devoted to trade and services. But round this vertical center, there is a flatter city spreading endlessly in all directions. 15 million people live around the capital. The built-up area sprawls to 2,600 meters high on the slopes of the surrounding volcanoes. La ciudad de México es reflejo de un de un problema nacional. Sigue siendo una de las esferas más importantes de atracción. Mexico City is a reflection of a national problem. It has always been a magnet for migrants, and this accounts for the very rapid growth of the urban spread, which has doubled the population of the city in 20 years. The centralizing feature of Mexico City is best illustrated by its wholesale market. The Gran Central de Abasto is a huge market spread over 3 million square meters, in which more than 70,000 people work daily. It was constructed with 45 aisles, each specializing in a specific product. Both domestic and imported food products converge on this market, which supplies not only the capital but the entire country. The fish market is one example. Nowhere else in the country can one find the variety of species that are available in this market, located 300 kilometers from the sea. We have the pulpo that is captured in Campeche and Yucatan. We have octopus which are found near Campeche, Yucatan, but which are not available in the Pacific, in Sonora, in Sinagoa. Octopus come here from the coast and go back to the coast. On the one hand, Mexico City is a dynamic city with efficient services and infrastructure, assembling and redistributing food supplies. A city with a good retail network, well-designed, efficient, and meeting hygienic and sanitary norms. On the other hand, there is a peripheral and marginal city made up of shanty towns called colonies. These are not integrated into the transport and supply networks. In spite of the fact that 60% of national food supply goes through Mexico City, we do not have a marketing and distribution system which facilitates access to cheap and good quality food by the poor. As a matter of fact, staple food products in downtown shops are cheaper than in low-income districts on the outskirts. The disordered and chaotic development of the outlying shanty towns, poor transport facilities, the lack of space for trading and storage, as well as low incomes, are all responsible for the difficulties faced by poor families in accessing healthy and safe food. In the most densely populated sectors of this district, there is a warren of alleys and narrow streets as well as large gullies and uneven surfaces. They are also inaccessible areas high up on the mountains. This is why it takes longer for people living in these areas to go to where food is sold. Transport costs paid by consumers to reach markets can absorb a large share of family income. The local administrators try to make space available for itinerant markets called tianguis, like this one we see here placed under high tension lines. But food is often not handled in the most appropriate way in these markets, as is shown by these stacks of meat. If carrots did not arrive on time due to a bad road network or lack of markets with a delay of 15 or 20 days after they were picked, then their nutritional capacity is lost. Half of the territory of the federal district is rural. In spite of this, agriculture in the peri-urban areas is disappearing. The price of land is so high that farmers simply cannot resist selling and abandoning food production. Only some niche products resist. This is the case of the amaranth, a highly nutritional pre-Hispanic vegetable, and the nopal with its tasty leaves, which are also highly demanded by the cosmetic industry. Another critical problem is the lack of water. Available water supplies are used excessively. Water is often contaminated, as is evident in the Zocchimilco Lake, 
This lake is what is left of an ancient lagoon around which the original Aztec city developed. This area is intimately connected with Mexico City, although it remains one of the six rural districts. Nearly 60% of its land is used for agriculture. It supplies water to the big city. Plots under intensive vegetable production now surround the lake. Horticultural products are grown on artificial plots surrounded by canals. This system of plots is called quinampa, but illegal houses are invading the quinampa and the water of the lake is being contaminated by sewage. The urban sprawl keeps on advancing. All the settlements here are illegal. An environment law exists. We hope that the authorities will implement it. As you can see, there are houses in the quinampa, although this is forbidden. It is a continuous fight between those who live here and the authorities.